are people generally good or are they generally bad my name is Anes Boy, and you're watching sit up church online The nature of man has been debated over the years, with people thinking, is mankind generally good and occasionally does bad things, or is mankind evil, bad, and just generally does good things? Well, many people think themselves to be good. Many people think themselves to be righteous. Many people think of themselves to be people who are not evil, who do fantastic things, and who, by their own goodness, would be acceptable to God. And many, many people think that this goodness would be sufficient for God to see their efforts and even accept them in his kingdom. But what does the Bible say? The Bible gives us a very clear picture concerning the nature of man. We're going to look at a few scriptures. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9, it says, The human heart is the most deceitful of all things and it is desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? Jeremiah 17 verse 9. Now that is a very, very telling scripture concerning the nature of man. We are told that our heart, the center of our emotions, the center of our belief system, the center of our decision making system is most deceitful above all things. Not only is it most deceitful, it is also desperately wicked. And not only is it desperately wicked, we are told it's even worse than we think who can really understand it. Now you need to look at this verse and understand what the Lord is saying concerning our hearts. When he says the heart is the most deceitful of all things, we need to understand what deceitful means. Deceit is a form of trickery. Deceit is making you think that you're going in one direction, while in truth, you're going in the total opposite direction. Deceit is a lie. And the human heart lies to us that we are good people, well in truth, it is deceitful. There is treachery. To even think that humanity is good is to fall prey to the deceitfulness of the heart. And then Jeremiah 17 verse 9 continues to say, it is desperately wicked. Now look at that. Desperately wicked. It desires to be wicked. It wants wickedness so badly that we are inclined to do wrong. Where did all this come from? Where all this came from, when mankind fell and rebelled against God in the book of Genesis chapter 3, when Adam and Eve ate the fruit and fell away, they disobeyed a holy, holy God, and Adam and Eve did not have children before the fall. All their children came after the fall. And because we all came after the fall, we epigenetically carry the sin of Adam in us. We are naturally sinners. We naturally fall away from the sea, from, from, from God's righteous standard. Look at a child. No one needs to teach a child to do the wrong thing. A child can do wrong all by themselves. No one teaches a child to slap the mother, to hit, to bite, to do all those wrong things. No one teaches a child to throw a tantrum, but a child needs to be taught how to do good. Some people normally say, Perhaps it's dependent on the environment you're brought, in, brought up in. If you're brought up in a good environment, you'll be good. If you're brought up in a bad environment, you'll be bad. Well, the Bible says, even for those children born in a good environment, they still are born with their Adamic sin. And it's not really the environment that makes us good or bad. The environment can temper us to behave or misbehave depending on the circumstances, but the nature of our heart is still desperately wicked. And then we're told, who really knows how bad it is? Now, so perhaps someone may be saying, but honest, don't human beings do good? Don't human beings account for some goodness? Well, yes, they do. But we need to look at that goodness and ask ourselves, is that goodness God's goodness? The Bible says in Isaiah 64 verse 6 that all our good deeds are like filthy rags before God. All our good deeds are but filthy rags before God. God says what we call goodness is really filthy rags. The standard that God has for us, the standard that God gave, the humanity that he created in the Garden of Eden that he desired to live forever, had such a high standard of goodness. 
he was holy he was set apart mankind was perfect when we fell we subscribed to evil we subscribed to the devil's way of thinking and in our own fallen and deceitful nature we do some form of morality using that sinful nature and we think it is good well god says it is not good it is filthy rags and you can find that your heart can even engage in good activities while motivated by pride, fear, and selfish ambition. Jesus was asked in the book of Matthew chapter 12, good teacher, and he says, why do you call me good? No one is good apart from my father, God who is good. And this is Jesus trying to show us a very important lesson, that only the divine is good. And we know that he was part of that divine, he was the son, but he used that lesson to teach us that we cannot subscribe to our fallen standard of goodness. We fall short of God's glory. We have deceitful hearts that are desperately wicked and we cannot even understand how bad they really are. The only way to address our sinful hearts is to get a new heart. We cannot have the old heart remain in us and still hope to have a relationship with God. God requires that human hearts be changed, human hearts be new. Humanity can try and do many good things, but that will never change our wicked, deceitful hearts. The only way to get new hearts is to give our old hearts to God and ask Him to cleanse them. How will He cleanse them? He will remove the wickedness, the blackness, and the dirt of our wicked hearts through the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ had a pure, perfect, sinless heart. He died on the cross, he was crucified, and he was killed as if he had a wicked, deceitful heart. Now that wicked, deceitful heart was mine, was yours, but Jesus Christ died for it. And because Jesus Christ died for it, the punishment for anyone who has a wicked, deceitful heart was taken away if that person believes in him. All our wickedness, all the treachery of our hearts can be renewed, can be taken away, and our hearts can be renewed and we can come to the kingdom of God and he'll give us new hearts, hearts of flesh, not hearts of stone. Only then will we begin to do God's will motivated by him. Only then will our wicked hearts be transformed. And one day when Christ returns, our hearts will be like him. As the Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, when we see him, we shall be like him. Have you believed in your goodness? Perhaps you need to stop because that goodness may keep you from accepting Christ as your savior. That goodness may make you think that Christ died for nothing. Think about the gravity of the cross. If human beings were good, why would God need to die such a painful bloody death? The only reason he died such a painful bloody death is proof of our wicked, deceitful hearts. We need a new heart. We need regeneration. This, in the month of October, is Reformation Month, when Martin Luther reformed the church and let us know that we are only right with God when our deceitful, wicked hearts are renewed. I pray you'll think about it and think about the sacrifice of Jesus and surrender your life to Him. Thank you so much for watching. I pray this video has blessed you. I pray it has caused you to examine your heart. Share the video, leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you next week. My name is Anis Wamboy and you're watching Sita Church Online.